Das ist das Kami Show. Um, I'm going to speak in English in two delicious mega facts. Uh, this is a picture of planet Mars, right? I'll just talk a little bit loosely at the beginning, and then at the end I'm going to have this like top ten list of the reasons why Earth should launch me off to Mars. Um, but maybe I'll give you a little bit of background first. So about 11 years ago, I got really interested in this idea of me going off onto another planet. And um, I've been fixated on it ever since. And then 697 days ago, I found out about this program called Mars One, which is a Dutch company that intends to do just that. Send people to live on Mars and start a new civilization. And then on August 31st of last year, a little over 200,000 people applied to this program, and then through some processes, they whittled it down to 705, and I'm one of those 705, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Representing Switzerland. <laughs> um, well, there's three people in Switzerland left. And um, I want you just to take a look at this picture of Mars here, and, and just stare at it, just fixate yourself on this photo. You can see a couple things. You can see there's some clouds that are there. Those are actually with water vapor. There's different colors because Mars has various different types of terrain. There's these giant mountains at the polar ice caps that are made of dry ice. And it's an interesting place. And when I see a photo like this, or when I check out Mars in the night sky, there are three main words that come to my mind. The first is challenge, the second is endurance, and the third is inspiration. It's clearly a challenge to blast off and, and go to Mars, right? But by accepting this challenge, we will begin to learn things that we couldn't yet ever possibly imagine. Evolution is driven by challenge, and this is perhaps a part of our evolution. The second word is endurance. Every 50 or 150 million years or so, there's a giant mass extinction that occurs on Earth, and something like over 50% of all the species on our planet are wiped out forever. And by going to Mars, we stand a little bit of a chance to increase our fight against the cosmic things that can kill us, like giant rocks that knocked out the dinosaurs, or the volcanoes that can explode and throw Earth into a dark, coldness. Right? And the third word, inspiration. Whenever you see somebody or something really incredible, you feel inspired. You watch a virtuoso piano player do something on the piano. Even if you don't like piano music, you can appreciate that it's something amazing and motivates you to also go out and do something amazing, whatever you do best. Hacky sack, skateboard, I don't know. <laughs> and billions of people are going to watch this blast off of this planet. And it's an incredible thing, and they're going to become inspired. And for those three words, and those three reasons, I think we can safely say that it's worth taking on this challenge, provided we can find the, the right people to get there, I suppose. This is now a painting of Mars that a friend of mine did, and I use this as like my sort of symbol, because in it I see those three words as well, and I find it really interesting. But two of the main questions that people ask me about this trip to Mars is, well, first one, how do you get there? And so I made a little image to demonstrate how it works. Basically, you have Earth down here, this is to scale, I've done it on a uh, chessboard, and the chessboard has uh, squares on it that are 100 million kilometers across. This is a slightly bigger chessboard than you have at home. And this is Earth, and there's Mars, and these orbits are correct, although the size of the planets and the sun clearly aren't. <clears throat> and there's the moon down here. Now when the Apollo astronauts took off for the moon, they left the Earth going 1.5 kilometers per second. That's plenty fast, that's great. But it took them three days to make the 400,000 kilometer journey. To get to Mars, we gotta go 400 million kilometers. It's a thousand times further. It's really, it's really far. But fortunately, it won't take us a thousand times as long to get there. And the main reason for that is because the Earth, as you know, is zipping around the sun, and it's going at 30 kilometers per second. So when you take off here on a ship, and we can use a ship, one that has the power of a Saturn V rocket that took the astronauts to the moon, for example, then we'll be going at 33 kilometers per second once you add in the speed of the, the Earth. This is relative to a fixed place within our solar system. 
And then as we transfer our orbit here, some of our energy, our kinetic energy from the rocket will be transferred into potential energy to move further from the Sun. When we land on Mars, we slow down to about 27 kilometers per second. Mars is spinning around at 24 kilometers per second, and so there's a three kilometer difference, and there's enough atmosphere and gravity on Mars to allow us to capture it, and then we can land there. So that's the idea of how we get there. To do a perfect low energy transfer, a Hoffman transfer as they call it, takes 258 days, but you can actually do it in six months if you burn a little bit more fuel. The second main question people ask me is, well, how do you train for this stuff? And they have simulation sites here on Mars. And here, or here on Earth, I mean. <laughs> Although it looks like Mars. I spent a couple weeks living in this habitat with, with five other people, and it was a pretty amazing experience. This is in the Utah desert. In order to go outside and explore this beautiful terrain, we had to put on spacesuits like this one. Here I'm fixing a satellite dish that blew over in the wind the night before. And you know, go around, you can take some nice photos, you can sit down and ponder, shit man, I think I left the stove on on Earth, who knows. <laughs> you can have some fun when you're out there. We sent this photo back to Mission Control, and they said to us, it doesn't look safe. And, uh, that's me, obviously. And I said, well, we're on Mars, what are you going to do? <laughs> they can't do anything. <laughs> so there's another picture of the planet. I was doing some research there. Um, basically, I was standardizing some extravehicular activities basically just means when you go outside, go for hikes. And I was counting my heart rates and my, how this affected my cognition, my reaction times and so forth when it came back. Um, that was a lot of fun. So I got three minutes left and I know that the top ten list takes about three minutes or so. So I'm going to move on to that and I have to come over here because I've got to read the, the screen to do this. And I'll speak fairly quickly. This is David Letterman. Um, okay, you ready? Top 10 reasons why Earth would launch me on a one-way trip to Mars. Okay, reason number 10. Since my dad is a splitting image of Patrick Stewart, I too may turn out looking like the captain of the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> and wouldn't that just be where I got Okay, reason number 9. I'm playful and imagine enough to endure bleak hard times, but serious enough to maybe just barely not cause the interplanetary spaceship to blow up while trying to fry an egg without gravity. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, jellyfish were hurt in this uh, science slam preparation. <laughs> Reason number eight, and this is, uh, this is my favorite, I've got big balls! <laughs> so big, in fact, I'm not afraid to get up in front of a bar full of people and tell bad jokes that don't make them laugh. <laughs> Reason number six, I've been preparing for this trip for more than 10 years, so let's get on with it already. Reason number six, I'm a neuroscientist at the University of Zurich Hospital for Psychiatry, so upon arriving at Mars, I'm sure not to go crazy, though I might develop dysfunctional ocular motor coronary discharge signals and or hyperactivity of the ventral prefrontal cortex during source memory exhibitions and or dopamine dysregulation media disruption series process. None of those would be good. Reason number five, I have a family history, no family history of cancer, meaning my DNA is probably protected against relatively high levels of radiation on Mars, so I likely die an even slower and more horrible death than the rest of the crew. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe after tripping on Mars, I'll become a superhero. <laughs> Reason number four I have very simple tastes in fashion. <laughs> of course, there are, there, are no, there are no clothing stores on Mars. <laughs> number three. I'm pretty skilled at playing guitar in cramped little spaces. We're going to have about 20 square meters or less to ourselves when we head off uh, on the trip. Reason number two, nobody loves me. <laughs> the number one reason, of course, why the Earth should send me off on a one-way trip to Mars is that I believe in the mission with everything that I am. And so I hope that you guys can support me in this. I hope that you learned a little bit, at least, I guess, about orbits and how we fly there tonight. And you can follow me on Twitter, and if you don't use Twitter, I know a lot of people don't, then just please send me an email, speshsab at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to talk about this. And the Mars One community platform is something anybody can join. It's just mars-one.com. Um, next, if you <laughs> 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 <laughs>